الله الذي أبدأ الأفلاك والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيد الكونين إمام الحرمين إمام القبلتين إمام الأتقياء نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآدم بين الماء والطين فقد قال الله وتبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق رسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He informs about an occurrence that will happen on the Day of Judgment In Surah Muddathir of the Holy Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says Kullu nafsim bima kasabat rahina That every single individual, every nafs Every person Bima kasabat with that what they have done Rahina, they are going to be detained on the day of judgment. Every individual is going to be detained. The word used in the Holy Quran is Rahina, which comes from Rahan, which is a collateral. When an individual, he takes a loan from a person, a person, he can ask for a collateral. That in the event that you are unable to repay that loan, this collateral, it can be liquidated. And then I can take whatever you have borrowed from me and therefore we'll be even at that point in time. With this orahan that this or collateral that this person has, he cannot do anything with it. All he does is he keeps it until the date of the fulfillment of the loan. Similarly, on the day of judgment, Allah is telling us about a similar occurrence. That human beings, people, are going to be detained on the day of judgment as well. They are not going to go anywhere at all. Where are they going to be detained on the day of judgment? Some of them explain, they are going to be detained in Jahannam on the day of judgment. People are going to be in Jahannam because they are unable to repay successfully loans that they are taken with Allah. And the loans and transactions that they have done with regards to fellow human beings that they didn't repay properly, they are going to be detained there in the fire of hell. Quran continues, Illa ashab al yameen, except the people of the right hand side. Those people who are muqarrab there near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who they fulfill the rights of Allah. And they also fulfill the rights of fellow human beings. Quran tells us they are not going to be detained in the fire of hell. And a conversation is now going to ensue between those people who have entered into Jannah and those people who are in the fire of hell. So those people who are on the right side, they are in Jannah. And they are going to be in Jannah. Fi Jannatin yatasa'alun. They are going to ask and they are going to question them. Ma salaka kum fi saqar. What has led you into saqar? What has led you into jahannam? In Surah Hijr of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laha sab'atu abwab. That for jahannam, it has seven doors. Just like in the month of Ramadan, we commonly hear, that, that Jannah, it has eight doors. One of those doors is called a Rayyan. For those people who fast, etc., they are able to enter through that door. Quran says, Jahannam also has seven doors. Laha sab'atu abwab. It possesses seven doors. Abdullah ibn Abbas, while commenting on this ayat in Surah Hijr, he explains that these seven doors of Jahannam, their names are, for the first door, its name is Jahannam. He says the second, Sa'ir, 
He says the third name of this door of Jahannam is called Lava. The fourth door of Jahannam is called Hutama. The fifth door of Jahannam is called Saqar. The sixth door of Jahannam is called Jahim. The seventh door of Jahannam is called Hawiya. I name them out. So when you read Quran and you hear these, you understand the different levels of Jahannam Allah is talking about. Jahannam is such a term that can be used for one door of all the doors of Jahannam. And it's also used loosely to mean any part of Jahannam as well. So Saqar, it's the fifth level, the fifth door in this Jahannam fire. Quran in Surah Muddathir says, Ma salakakum fi Saqar. A'mal, the doing of certain deeds, are going to be the means that lead people to different doors in Jannah. Similarly, the doing of different deeds are going to lead people to different doors in the fire of hell as well. So, O oh, inhabitants of hell, what made you enter Saqar? What made you go through this door specifically? Why didn't you go through any other? Ma salakakum fi Saqar. They now start to respond towards the Jannatis and they say, Lam nakumin al musallin. First one. We weren't people who used to pray. We weren't people who used to observe salat. Salat wasn't part of our lives. When we look at Islam, from a very small child we learn, Buniyal Islam wala khams. Islam's built on five pillars. First of them, belief in Allah and the Rasul. Second one, iqam is salat, establishment of salat. We hear many a times traditions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all parents when your kiddos reach seven years of age encourage them to perform salat. At the age of 10 to be stern and to even beat them to perform salat at that point in time. A person accepts Islam. First amal is to be taught is performance of salat. Sahaba jihad fighting for their lives and the i'la of kalimatillah, the establishment of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a noble deed they are doing. Allah sends wahi and revelation. At that point in time, not even here you can leave salat, you got to pray even here as well. The method it's a little different, but you can't leave off salat at all. You have to pray even in this halat and even in these conditions. You got to perform your salat. Salat is such an important pedestal in Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells the ummah in the Quran that you talk to everybody today, they have so much problems. So much different trials they are going through. So much predicament. So much sadness. So much unease. People are going through thoroughly and throughout. Quran says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah That you seek Allah's help with two things. Patience and the performance of salat. You got to pray. Got to perform salat. Got to be people who put in our heads before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right now we are currently in an age whereby our kids they are on online school. And if it is you have a really good teacher who is caring about your kids. If they miss them at the morning you might get a text message. Yeah, I haven't seen your kid this morning join classes yet. If the entire day goes by you might get another one. For the entire day, I didn't see your child log in. A second day might go. A third day might go. Imagine the concern that this teacher has. He's always sending a reminder. Hey, I want your kid to be online. If you're a parent as well, who is concerned of your child, you'll go knocking on their door, you'll go looking for them. Your teacher is texting me, why aren't you in class? How haven't you joined classes yet? What's going on with you? A second day, a third day might go. You ask yourself, how much tolerance you are going to have if every day you are getting this announcement all the time? Will you become such that forgetting now? You just go on and play. Is that our attitude? 
You've just gone through a few months of it. Was that your attitude? Imagine every single day we get five text messages from the Muazzin. Every day he sends us five messages. Hayal al-Salah, Hayal al-Falah. And he is reminding, come to success. The question is, what is your success? What do you define or where do you see success? Come to Salat, Hayal al-Falah, come to success. He sends those messages five times every single day. So many people have apps on their phones. You will sit next to them, Salat time will come in. Azan starts to spring out. You hear them, Allahu Akbar. Where is the response to that? The performance of Salat. So what have led you into Saqar? Lam naku min al First one. We weren't people who used to observe Salat. Second. وَلَمْ نَكُنْ نُتْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ We weren't people who used to feed the poor individuals as well. When people become avaricious and the love of this dunya enters their heart, they don't see anybody more poor than their own selves. As such, despite having, they don't ever want to give at all. They don't ever want to give at all. So this now creeps in the heart of a person. They don't see how much Allah has blessed them with. And they don't look for opportunities to give. Imagine the dua of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ahyini miskinan. Oh Allah, let me live as a miskin. Wa amitni miskinan. Oh Allah, let me die as a miskin. Wa shurni fi. And let me rise, let me be resurrected amongst the gathering of the miskeen on the day of judgment. So if the Nabi of Allah was amongst us right now, he ain't getting a sin from us. Lam naku minal miskeen. We won't just to give towards the miskeen, the poor individuals. This is what they are saying. So therefore to look for opportunities whereby we can always spend our wealth to give our wealth in those avenues where on the day of judgment it's going to be stored for us. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, sometimes the difficulties that we go through in life is because of certain deeds that we have done and Allah becomes angry with us. As such, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, expiate out the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the giving of sadaqah and the giving of charity. Look for all those opportunities whereby, towards whatever abilities we have, whereby we can give a little bit for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Become people who are charitable. Become people who give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, we were people... That we used to indulge in futility with those people who used to also indulge themselves in futility. Allah ibn Kathir explains, what does this mean? It means we used to talk to people, engage in conversations with people who have no ilm and no knowledge at all. When people have no real true dini ilm, and we go and have ilmi discussions with them, then all they are going to give is what they think. Not really and truly what is the desire of Quran and the ahadith. There are many people who might use an ayat of Quran. They might even use one tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they don't have proper ilm of Quran, neither ahadith. So Qatada radiallahu ta'ala says, while explaining the same verse, he says they are how? He says they are such people who have, who have become misguided. You think they possess guidance. When you interact with them, they do nothing except misguide you. Therefore, choose well who we conversate with. Choose well who we have discussions with. Why? Commentators explain. Because whoever we interact with, the discussions, they find a place in our hearts. It either they create positivity, firmness, or either it brings about doubt in our hearts. So look very well who we talk with. 
Look very well who it is we take our ilm and we take our knowledge from. And the last one he says, وَنُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينِ And we were people as well who denied يَوْمِ الدِّينِ who denied the day of judgment. A person is not going to change or want to change or do anything if he doesn't believe that there is a day of consequence. If a child knows that he will never have to write an exam, ask your own self, would you ever study? If a child doesn't know yet, there is no exam at all. You only keep coming to school. What's so hard about going to school? That's easy. When he knows he has an exam, now only because of that he starts to study now. So a parent will now tell your child, hey, exams are coming up, so therefore study. Not study because you need to learn. It's important material. It's because there is an exam you need to study. So there is a day of judgment as well. There is a day of exam as well. There is a day when it is we will have to put forth all that we did in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now study. Be mindful of what it is you are going to do. But if it is you have no certainty of this, this yawm deen you have no certainty of that, you have no certainty about standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how much will an individual ever do? So these are the different things that led them towards saqar. The hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Kulla yawmin every single day, yaghdu every single morning, an individual, he does a transaction with himself. For bay'u nafsahu, he does a trade with himself. For mu'tiquha aw mubiquha. It's either he frees himself from the fire of hell, or it's either he imprisons himself in the fire of hell. Every single day, every morning, a person he has a choice. Every single morning the Nabi says, you're a businessman. Every individual is a businessman. And he has an important decision to make. It's either I'm going to free myself from Jahannam. I don't want to go there at all. If he doesn't want to go there from the very morning, he will have to plan. What are the things that will lead me there? What are the things that will not lead me there? And therefore he will plan his day. And if it is, he doesn't take heed. He entraps himself in the fire of Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us that we have entered into a new Gregorian year. It's all just to give some type of indication to a human being that time is passing by. When every cry of every newborn child tells us that another year has gone, that I have advanced in age, Every individual becomes a father, they become happy. But at the same time, how old have you now become? That person who has now become a grandfather, you become happy. How much more advanced in age have I become? When every sprouting of that grain of hair under the chin, when everyone turning grey, it's all a sign, time is flying by. When every single tree that dries and falls, when every single flower that wilts, it tells us that time is going by. They are flying by. Many individuals, they advance in age. And if it is you were to ask them, uncle, you have reached 60 and 70 years. He tells you, I didn't even feel that 60 or 70 years. It has just gone by like that. You know, it's like no 30 and 40 years is missing. So fast it has gone by. Time is going by. And with every single day of our lives, we have these choices to make. Are we going to end up in saqar because of the non-performance of salat? The non-appreciation of our wealth properly due to the company that we keep and not having proper beliefs? Or are we going to stand up and rise to the occasion and become people who really want to be from ashabul yameen? Those who will enter into Jannah and ask these people, perplexed, what really led you towards the fire of hell? Let this year and this time and this moment be a time of change, whereby we want to stand up. Many times when Ramadan comes to an end, 
People, they have so much aspirations and so much things that they want to change. Allah Mani explained this is called an irada and intention. So much people, they have intentions, hundreds of intentions. We just don't want intentions, we want something called azmat, determination. Many people have intentions, but only few are determined. Look at the words of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Sahabi asked the Nabi, I would like to get a very short, simple advice. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qul, amantu billah. Say, I believe in Allah, thumma staqim. And then remain steadfast upon it. Then remain steadfast upon it. You can't just say you believe and yes, that's it. No. Steadfastness. Hey, you need to have azmat. You need to be determined upon that statement that you said. That's the simple advice the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he gave. And you'll also see that those people who are determined how much they achieve. So many people want to lose weight. Everybody talks about it. But everybody wants the short way out. Only those few who are determined will put in the right effort in order to get it done. So many different individuals, they have a lot of intentions. That's excellent. Transform those intentions into azma determination now. When it is you are determined, whether it is you feel to do it or not, you are going to do it. With determination, whether it is you want to pray Fajr or not, you will still pray it because you are determined. You are not waiting on the feeling. If you set your time for Quran, we are human beings, there are times you're going to feel not to read it. But because you are determined, no, this 10 minutes, this 50, I must read it. And then there are times that will come whereby enthusiasm, enthusiasm will come over you. If you're already determined, and now you get enthusiasm, imagine how much more you are going to do. Azmat, then enthusiasm. Don't wait for the enthusiasm, that's shaitan. He wants you to wait, he will never give it. Have azmat, and then Allah will send the enthusiasm. And then you will see how much you are going to achieve. So one is azmat, to be determined. And if the enthusiasm will come, then excellent. That's why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best amal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a habbul amali ilallah, is adwa muhawa in qalla. Is that which is consistent even though it's small. Consistency is azmat, determination. I'm going to do a little every single day. Azmat, even though it's small, will bring about result. But if it is, you just wait. And you just wait, and you just wait for enthusiasm. Well, every single day we are enthusiastic to exercise. Every single day we are enthusiastic to quit smoking. Every day we are enthusiastic to do so many different things. And every day it's getting worse and worse and worse. Look at the ummah with regards to the salat. Look at them with regards to the tilawat of Quran. Look at them with regards to azkar. Look at them with regards to the akhlaq. There is a lot of intentions, but there is no azmat. Let's bring azmat within ourselves, determination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me determined. May Allah make you determined. To gain the rida and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us enter through any of the doors of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst the Ashabul Yameen. May Allah grant us istiqamat upon the performance of our salat. Not only ourselves, but our wives and children, our families, our entire communities. May Allah make us people who look out for the poor. And whatever we have, we try to aid and assist. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good, knowledgeable companions. And may Allah our yaqeen and belief in akhirah be resolute and firm. That we gain azmat and determination to send forth something for tomorrow. And may we be excellent businessmen every single day. Whereby we set ourselves free to get the jannah. And we don't imprison ourselves. Wa akhir da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.